Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everyone. So I am Esteban Jimenez from ICA UWA. And today I'm going to talk to you about how we can use an hydrodynamical simulation to study the evolution of galactic disks. So uh, this is motivated by the fact that in observations, we see that galaxies, galactic disks at low redshift tend to be very thin, rotationally supported, and have clear spiral arms. But if we go to high redshifts, we can see that these galaxies, uh, the morphology is more disturbed. They are more, they display clamp, a clamp destructors and are less rotationally supported. So uh, and this, this is telling us that there are several physical processes that are going on during the evolution of the galactic disks. So trying to understand this evolution will inform us to about all the physical processes that are relevant, that are relevant for galaxy evolution. Um, one way to study this is through uh, resolve kinematics. So, for example, here I'm showing results from observations in the left hand side and from simulations, in particular from the illustrious TNG simulation in the right hand side. And here I'm showing the V over sigma, which is uh, used to quantify this uh, how rotationally supported the galaxies are. And you can see that if you go to a uh, high redshift, this rotationally support decrease, which is telling us that. There is some drivers in the galaxies, physical drivers in the galaxies that are inject that are injecting turbulence um, at higher redshifts. So the main question, or the main the main question that we're addressing this project is um, what are the physical drivers that drive the velocity, the gas velocity dispersion? And here I I've highlighted the one of the most popular um, hypotheses that are in the literature. So the first one is that stellar feedback is injecting turbulent energy from these massive stars through supernovae, uh, radiation pressure, or stellar winds. Also, you can form gravitational instabilities, which are basically which produces uh, because of um, an excess of gas that can uh, create um, that is um, are very massive. That then they can create self-gravitating clamps, then in consequence can can perturb the gravitational disk. Uh, the gravitational potential of the disks. And also you have these more external effects like, for example, cosmological accretion or mergers that can reset all the distribution of the star and the gas in the, uh, in the galaxy and then affecting the kinematics that we can measure from them. So one of the, one of the reasons why studying this is so complex is that all of these processes are happening at the same time. So it can be extremely difficult to disentangle the effect of each of them separately. That's why we want to use the Eagle simulation, which uh, was introduced by, by Ruby in the previous talk. And here I'm showing, so uh, Eagle, the Eagle simulation is a cosmological hydrodynamical simulation that provides us with a very big sample of galaxies uh, in a wide range in stellar masses and star formation rate. Right? So we can um, study different environments as well and different, very different galaxies. So here in order to mimic uh, what is observed from IF, IFU surveys in particular, we are selecting only these galaxies uh, from Eagle. And here you can see an example of uh, a chon and phase zone projection of one Eagle galaxy. And in order to measure the gas velocity dispersion, we are using um, a mass weighted quantity, the mass weighted vertical gas velocity dispersion. So we are obtaining a profile. And here in the right panel, you can see. Uh, all the lines here correspond to examples of profiles for all galaxies at redshift point 0 0.1 uh, between masses of 10 to the 10 and 10 to the 10.3. And here, uh, so from all these profiles, we obtain one single value. So we collapse all these profiles in one single value, value for all digital galaxies, uh, which correspond to this uh, region where the velocity dispersion profile is more or less flat. So we do this for all our galaxies in Eagle, for all the red chips. And after we do this, we can obtain a prediction from Eagle about the evolution of the velocity dispersion across cosmic time. So here I'm showing the results from Eagle correspond to the solid lines. Um, first, the blue solid line correspond to the uh, ramp from the, that uses um, the fiducial physics for the, that uses the fiducial physics um, 
in the subrig phys physical prescriptions. So it's uh, in order to match the uh, galaxy observables like the galaxy stellar mass function. So um, you can see that if we compare this uh, prediction from Eagle to the observational result that I'm showing here as the, as the points, you can see that Eagle predicts very well what is observed from uh, the uh, different surveys. Also here, I'm including another run, which is a physical variation run that turn off the effect of feedback across all times. So basically, you wouldn't expect that this is reproducing the observable universe, right? But it will help us to assess what is the effect of feedback, what, uh, what is the effect of feedback in driving the velocity dispersion. So um, across the next figures, you are gonna see that I'm comparing these two simulations to see uh, if we found any difference. Um, so now you can see that, so here the solid, line are, are, the solid lines are showing the median relations, but you also can see the scatter here that are the, uh, that the scattering in this relation is very big. And that's because of, uh, we are comparing galaxies uh, of very different properties. So for example, if I take all the galaxies that reach 0.1 and I plot that against their stellar masses and star formation rates, uh, which you can see here in these two panels, you can see that they sample and uh, we are considering galaxies that have very different stellar masses and star formation rates. And the first thing that you can note is, is that if you compare the reference model with the no feedback one, you can see that there is a clear offset between them. So you would, you would say, or uh, this would suggest if you uh, uh, look at this plot for the first time, you can say, oh, clearly stellar feedback has an effect because when we include it, we get a systematically offset between the two simulations. Uh, but one interesting thing here that uh, is a subtle detail is that um, we find a correlation in the no feedback run, which is uh, surprising because in the no feedback run, there is no causal relation between um, star formation rate and feedback because the gas particles in, in, in this simulation are not heated by any feedback event. So this correlation is, uh, we think that this correlation is a manifestation of an underlying process that is correlating with the star formation rate. So that was uh, one interesting result. And um, now I'm gonna show you saying the same plot again, velocity dispersion in y-axis as a function of stellar masses for different redshifts. Again, as I said before, we found this clear offset between the two simulations, which would suggest in principle that feedback has an effect. But we noticed that if we uh, change the x-axis by the halo masses of these galaxies, we found that actually the two simulations um, agree very well. So for example, here, uh, in, this is the same plot as before, just changing the x-axis, you can see that the, uh, the predictions from the not feedback RAM are in agreement with the reference model. But the only difference maybe is that the scattered in the no feedback run is a bit larger. So the conclusion from this plot is that the feedback seems to be not be the main driver, but what is actually driving the velocity dispersion is something that correlates or is related with the halo mass or in more larger scales. And that's why we started looking at the, thank you. We started looking at the effect of gas accretion rate, cosmological accretion which is, you can see in this panel. So here, the y-axis corresponds to the, uh, again, the velocity dispersion, but this time is normalized by the virial velocity of the halos. So I'm trying to remove the intrinsic correlation between sigma and halo mass as a function of the specific accretion rate, which is the specific, the accretion rate normalized by the mass of coal gas in the disks. And you can see here in the study lines that this, um, the study line show that this is, um, uh, there is a strong correlation, and here the different panels are different uh, redshifts, so I'm combining results from different redshifts. And the dashed lines are the, uh, are, are the same as the solid ones, solid ones, but including the galaxies that change the morphology, so they are not considered disks anymore. And here you can see that this uh, is relevant only for very high accretion rates, which is indicating that if the accretion rate is very high, you can perturb your disk so much that it, it will stop being a disk or it won't be considered a disk anymore. So uh, this is what we consider as uh, the main driver of turbulence then, but still just, you can see that there is a lot of scattering in this relation. And one of the things we made was look at uh, if, the, if, the, if the accretion was very misaligned to the, 
to the angular momentum of the disk. Does, does, does that have an effect in the velocity dispersion? And we found that it does actually. So here, for example, the yellow lines correspond to the same relations that I was showing before, but only considering if the equation is very misaligned with the angular momentum of the disk. And you can see that when that happens, the velocity dispersion tend to be higher. So that is what we consider as our secondary driver. Uh, so as a summary, we found that the, using the eagle simulation that stellar feedback seems to be not the main driver of gas turbulence in the ISM of the galaxies. And that, that the trend that is usually found both in observation and simulation seems to be an underlying trend with the accretion rate instead. Um, and we found that the accretion rate so is the main driver and the misaligned accretion the second driver, the secondary driver. Thank you very much.